One of the most important things to pay attention to is that you're looking through the laser, not at the diffraction pattern that falls on the wall. So even if you're sitting two or three feet away, like we're seeing here, you want to be looking at beyond the light, like you're looking through the window versus looking at the surface of the window. Also notice how wide the diffracted pattern of the laser is on the wall. People that choose lasers that are produce this thing that just looks like one line, that's not wide enough for you to see anything because you're looking beyond the laser, not at the surface. So it will be too thin, too narrow of a crack to look through, so to speak. You can come closer like this, and I would recommend to cover one eye so the light doesn't hit your cornea. And then you would be looking from the side and the side is better because you get a separation of the layers inside. You want to stay on this task for a little bit until you start seeing structures emerge. If you still don't see anything, you can actually come to the side of the wall, like so, and try and look at the edge of where the light becomes visible from the side. This weirdly makes it even more coherent. One extra emphasis I would give is that you want to stay with it until you start seeing digits. The separation between just seeing the structures and seeing the digits is total. When you still see the structures, it's possible to imagine that these structures are due to the influence of DMT in your brain while you're looking at a stochastic pattern. But when you see the digits, this hypothesis becomes much less tenable. You will notice some motion, stay with that motion. The digits are usually much smaller than people expect. So keep looking until you see actual digits running numerals, and what seems like Japanese katakana characters. If you're using a glass of water like here, what you can do, you can either look into the glass of water, into the little reflections that you can see inside the glass. And then what you want to do is to mimic the gesture that we do when we go a little bit cross-eyed, which you will notice is the same gesture that your eyes are doing when you're trying to look beyond something. It's also very similar to what we have to do when we're trying to look at a magic eye image. To anybody who's not familiar, the magic eye is a visual illusion that we put on a two-dimensional paper and when you do a certain thing with your attention, you can all of a sudden see a three-dimensional image in there. But it's embedded in there. It's designed to do that. And the gesture you do with your eyes, if you're familiar with Magic Eye, is very similar to what we're trying to do here. So either we're looking at the glass directly, and we're trying to expand those little reflective patterns, you will see some glistening portions inside the glass, and what you want to do is to expand them by doing the Magic Eye gestures with your eyes. And you will see the code running inside very coherently. Another option is to look at the light that hits the wall after it's been additionally refracted through the glass of water. So now we have a diffraction and a refraction pattern all together. You wanna to be looking at the area after it passed the water, which is different than the light that hits the wall directly. Something about the refractive index of water that makes what we see in the laser even more coherent. It's not clear what yet, we're working on that, but that's the case and it can help people who are having a hard time seeing it. Oh, 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 oh,